Good afternoon all. Another chip on breadboard. And uh, this time it's the turn of the uh, 6116 RAM chip. This is a 2K by 8 bits. So it's a 16K bit uh, static RAM chip, CMOS. Uh, now this one actually says on it TMM 2016 AP. That's a Toshiba branded device, but I'm going to call it a 6116 because this particular RAM chip is generally speaking called a 6116. And uh, this RAM chip produces a blinking light spectacular. Look at this. I mean, look at all those flashing lights. It's amazing. Now, actually, we're really lucky here because I wasn't expecting really much to happen on these blue LEDs at all, because this RAM chip it has random data in it. But it just so happens that when you switch it on, cells in this chip appear to sort of almost alternately pull high and then the next uh, cell pull low. So you get this flashing LED pattern. Um, it's going to be half the rate of this clock because that clock, which comes from this 555, goes through one stage of frequency division and then it uh, addresses this. This is a an eight stage frequency divider or counter. And you can see that it's uh, counting here on these six LEDs. I couldn't put all eight in because they just wouldn't fit. And I was a little bit concerned about these 150 ohm resistors on red LEDs uh, drawing vast amounts of current from this poor little 74LS393. So I've just fitted six of them. But you get an idea of this counting up in binary. We're missing the two least significant um, bits here. And you can see that these LEDs, it's not quite on and off. There are little sort of funny gaps. There's an, a long on period there, and then there's a long off period. And then there are sort of peculiarities where the cells randomly didn't go high and low alternately, but went to some other value. And you can see that just every now and again, there's a sort of random data pattern in there. Now, this is a 2K word or 2K byte CMOS static RAM chip, but I'm only passing eight address lines or eight changing address lines to this chip. So in fact, I'm only looking at 256 different RAM locations. That's only an eighth of the memory contained in this chip. And that's because this counter happens to provide eight different uh, outputs. So I can cycle through 256 locations. Um, the higher order address lines, I've just tied uh, low, I think. So seven eighths of this chip, I'm not even displaying. Uh, so here's a block diagram of the chip from this uh, data sheet. This is the TMM2016AP-10, uh, which I think means 100 nanoseconds access time. And uh, you can see that I'm putting addresses on A7 down to A0 but I've tied a 8, 9, and 10 all low. So in fact, we're only looking at an eighth of the chip. Now, I've also tied uh, output enable low so that we're forcing data out on these eight data I.O. lines at all times. Chip select is low, obviously, because uh, we need to select the chip. This, these are active low signals. And write enable, I've pulled high. But I've pulled it high through a 1K resistor, which means that I can put a piece of wire in here and pull it low. So what happens if we pull write enable low? Well, we write to the chip. Let's see what it does. So if I attach the end of this wire to ground, we will start writing to the chip. Now I'm going to do it at a particular position. I'm going to do it where all these LEDs are off. So we're starting at what is kind of, in effect, uh, address zero. So let's wait for that to get up to a full count. And then all the LEDs to go off, which is very soon now. And it's now. Let's start writing. And I'll write to the chip for 16 counts. So when these four get to F. So that's it there. So I wrote to the chip um, starting at zero. So we've got to wait for this to count back up to zero and counting up to F, which is 1111 on these lower order four uh, red address lines. So let's wait for it to get back to zero, which it's just coming up to now. And there we are. I wrote a whole bunch of ones. In fact, one, 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 ones. 
into the chip um, for that set of addresses. In fact, it's not just um, 16 addresses because we're not looking at the lower order two address lines. So in fact, it's 64 addresses. So 64 out of the 256 addresses that we're looking at, I wrote data to, and there it is. The data is all highs. So I've managed to write to the chip. Now I pulled the, and it'll end about there. I pulled the uh, write enable line low at the same time as pulling the output enable line low. So it was both kind of reading and writing at the same time, which is probably a bit naughty. Um, but in some ways that might have made it work because um, it will be writing to the data lines uh, sort of, um, well, it will be putting data on the data lines and then reading it back in. But anyway, we have effectively written to that portion of the chip and the rest of the, uh, well, eighth of the chip that we're looking at is random data. So have I done this just for fun? Well, yes, of course. We always have uh, flashing lights just for fun, but actually this uh, circuit is going to become part of my next big digital project, which is a breadboard style computer, uh, build your own computer on uh, these cheap breadboards, um, very much like the one that Ben Eater is describing that he built, and he's now describing um, all the different elements of the computer. But I'm gonna do mine a little bit differently. Now this is still a work in progress, but uh, here's my block diagram of my computer. And it is gonna be a little bit different to a conventional computer. Uh, you can see here that we've got the clock, so that's kind of the 555 but I'll have the ability to single step that. We've got a program counter, which is just a binary counter, which takes you through uh, addresses in the program memory. This will be the program memory. And then the data output lines, these eight data output lines, will go to an address decoder. In fact, it'll probably be two address decoders, four lines to each decoder. And those uh, 16 addresses and these 16 uh, no, these 16, um, well, they're going to become addresses. The data coming out of this program memory will be used to address. Um, now you've got four bits here and four bits here. Four bits will be for read and four bits will be for write. So you can read and write to 16 different um, addresses where we're going to be holding data. Uh, now, let me try and explain how this is going to work. One of the addresses will have um, an input latch or an input buffer, which will read a set of um, dip switches. Another one will be a latch, which will have a set of LEDs on it. Another one will just work as a simple memory, just a one byte memory. This computer is going to start with one byte of data memory. And then we've got these two things here, which are again latches but the inputs and the outputs are skewed off by one. And what these are, are shifters. One of them will be a shift left and the other one will be a shift right. So what this computer can do is every time you move to a new address in program memory, it'll put out two addresses. One will be a read address and one will be a write address. And it will simply read from one of these latches and write to a different one depending on what addresses you put on these four lines. Now, this is partly the reason that I haven't made a video for, for four or five days, because I've been totally obsessing over this uh, computer architecture. It is an unusual architecture. It's an OISC. It's a one instruction set computer. Yeah, that's going through the bit where I wrote to it. Um, in fact, it's more of an OIC, really, an OIC. It's a one instruction computer because this computer only has one instruction, and that instruction is move data from one address to another address. In fact, I don't even like the description move. I prefer copy, because what it's doing is it's copying from one address in this data memory to another address in this data memory. And by copying from different uh, registers in here, we can move literal data to an output display area, we can move literal data into a memory location. We can then move uh, the data in that memory location to a shifter. So all the bits are shifted either right one bit or left one bit. One of these will be a shift left and one will be a shift right. So that we can actually manipulate data. We can um, 
uh, compute it. The uh, shift left and shift right are effectively multiply by two and divide by two. So by moving data around, we can actually modify it and do computations. This is a move-based single instruction computer. So that's probably enough of me rambling on about my new um, computer architecture. It is fairly complex, um, quite difficult to get your head around. It's taken me four or five days to get my head around this. But this uh, circuit on this board, this chip on breadboard, is the sort of first part of this. It's the clock, the program counter, and the program memory. I do need to add now a means to write to the memory. We've done it with this wire, but it's very crude. I want to be able to do it where you single step through the memory locations and you can actually write data using an eight-way uh, dip switch. But uh, for the moment, this is just a fantastic flashing LED thing. So the breadboard computer is coming and that's the beginning of it. Um, it's a bit of an inauspicious start, but um, it has taken me a while to get my head around all of this. But uh, this thing's quite good fun on its own. Now what I'm going to do now is speed the clock right up so that that white LED is flashing almost imperceptibly fast. Now we've got a fairly rapid count there on the red LEDs counting through um, all 256 memory locations. Now I'm going to write data into this thing for the entire count. So when it gets to zero, uh, which is there, I'm going to write data into it for the full count so that I fill every location. And now the LEDs no longer flash because I've filled every single memory location with all ones. So they're just on all the time now. Now, of course, again, I, I uh, mentioned that we are only looking at an eighth of this memory, but we are looking at 256 locations, all now filled with all ones. How can I get it back to flashing LED? Switch it off. Switch it back on. And the memory just seems to resort to this, or default to this pattern where the LEDs flash on and off, which, I mean, what could have been better? It would have been really boring if it had defaulted to... Um, not to flashing LEDs on and off, and all the LEDs, or all the memory locations had either defaulted to all zeros or all ones, but this particular chip, yeah, flashing lights, fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, flashing light spectacular. Uh, a couple more videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And uh, my face down here, that icon, is the subscribe icon so click there if you want to subscribe to my channel but uh for the moment cheerio